again YouTube welcome back to my channel my name is McPato and this is McPato PC and today I'm bringing you guys some benchmark results uh, for anyone who hasn't seen my Morpheus 2 installation video series it's a three-part series I'll just link it up in the corner here if you're interested in that I did have a reference Vega 64 swapped out the cooler and this is uh, the first benchmark video with uh, 10 games that I've had a chance to do. Uh, I've increased my daily settings. So I used to use the balance profile and then I did some undervolting and stuff like that. Overclocking, what have you. But the temperatures were really high. So I swapped out the cooler and now I'm able to basically use much higher settings and it stays cooler and it performs obviously better. Just how much better? That's what this video is for. Um, I'm not gonna ramble on for very long here. I wanna get into the charts and then we'll do of course a, uh, a summary. Uh, but I'm just gonna give you guys the highlights of what the system specs are and what I did. So I'm running, actually I just built a new computer or changed my motherboard and CPU. Uh, so I had an i7 6700K, I now have a Ryzen 5 2600, it is overclocked to 4.125 gigahertz, um, running 32 gigabytes of G-Skill, 2400 megahertz RAM, but I have it overclocked to 2700 megahertz, and uh, I have a an ASRock x470 tai chi motherboard and uh, my vega 64 it's a sapphire reference vega 64 when i'm running the turbo profile that's literally you go into adrenaline the performance global wattman in your software from amd select the turbo profile and that represents the highest stock or highest uh manufacturer approved overclock I don't recommend the turbo profile I'd use balanced myself if you're going to use one of those profiles uh, you get very very little performance increase and quite a bit of additional uh, power consumption using turbo versus um, balanced then for the overclock I'm using overdrive and tool version 0.2.6. Uh, if you're gonna do any kind of serious overclocking with Vega and under undervolting, etc., I recommend this tool and I'll be doing a tutorial and overclock and undervolt using this particular piece of software. It's free, uh, just Google it. And uh, yeah, I recommend it 100%. It's very easy, very flexible. Uh, but anyway, my settings in there, I've got my P6 set to 1700 megahertz at 1175 millivolts and my P7 1755 megahertz, 1185 millivolts. And then HBM, I'm able to go to 1155. I haven't tried to go further, that's pretty good for me at uh, 1085 millivolts and then I've got my target temperature set to 80 degrees it doesn't go anywhere near 80 but that just gives it a bit more headroom to perform uh, at its best and my minimum fan speed is set to 11 uh, sorry 1800 uh, with that said all the games are tested at 1440p ultra or maximum settings and if there's something different like uh, MSAA or something I've tried to put that in the top of the chart uh, but anyway with that said let's get into the charts followed by some results and I think you guys will be pretty pretty impressed overall all right we'll be back in a few minutes
so we've had a chance to review those charts and I think uh, you'd agree it's it's pretty impressive stuff uh, and just to go over some of the, the highlights or I'll go over the percentages here and then uh, a couple highlights and then we'll close it off there but Assassin's Creed Origins we gained 5.5 percent performance in the average FPS uh, Batman Arkham Knight we gained 7% average FPS Dirt Rally 12.6% performance increase uh, using the custom overclock Deus Ex Mankind Divided 10% Far Cry 5 2.38% For Honor 11.95% Ghost Recon Wildlands went up 11.9% as well Rise of the Tomb Raider up 8.98%, Shadow of Mordor 10.25, and The Division 9.4%. That's uh, pretty impressive. I think if we average it out, we're getting about 9 FPS on average more per game uh, for average FPS. And perhaps equally uh, impressive, the minimum or the 0.01% or sorry 0.1% lows uh, three games are double digit increases there uh, we got Deus Ex Mankind Divided was up 30% in the 0.1% low uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands 10.25% and Rise of the Tomb Raider experienced a 20% 0.1% low increase uh, very very consistent overall the only game that had a decrease of 1.8 and 1.9 percent was Batman Arkham Knight at the 1 percent low and the 0.1 percent low uh, but again it experienced 7 percent higher performance for average FPS so overall that's margin of error for the for the negative there but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did please hit the like button I'll uh, put a card in the corner here for my current undervolt overclock Vega you know unleash your Vega video uh, if you guys are interested in that definitely like it and consider subscribing to my channel uh, lots of Vega stuff coming in the new year uh, we got to get those Vega videos out before Navi is released, probably early, first or early second quarter next year. Definitely we should know more after CES in January. So, uh, you know, they're saying the with the leak from Adore TV and other media outlets, uh, the current highest ranking Navi, which I think is 3080, would have about a 15% increase over Vega 64 as you guys can see with some undervolt overclocking you guys are able to get uh, just about 10% average uh, across the board uh, with your Vega 64 so guys don't worry about Navi right now I think if you got a Vega 64 and you're willing to put a bit of work into it it will have quite a long uh, future ahead of it and uh, that's looking to be more and more true big driver release probably coming out from AMD this month we're gonna replace adrenaline who knows what kind of performance that might unleash and uh, we got just lots of tech news coming up I'm gonna really hammer Vega hard do some 1080p versus 1440 benchmark maybe do some split screen stuff and uh, also 1440p ultra versus 1440p high I'll try to do like a 20 25 game uh, hardware unboxed style benchmark marathon video for those as well if you guys have questions about undervolting overclocking I'll be addressing that in a future video uh, tutorials and I'll be of course reviewing my Ryzen 2600 and my ASRock motherboard as well so lots of great stuff coming up in the new year guys I'm gonna try to get one more video out maybe two in December and uh, that'll wrap up 2018 
All right, guys. Thank you to everyone who follows me, who subscribed, who likes, who comments. You guys are making the channel a huge success, much more than I would have anticipated ever, let alone just over a year after uh, I started. So thanks, guys. We'll see you again soon. And until then, bye-bye.